Hi, this is Steve from SewingGold.com. This is a reliable SoQuiet 6000 SM servo motor. It is a brushless, clutchless, digital servo motor. Um, I am going to be installing the synchronizer, the optional synchronizer for this motor today. Um, what I want you to do for starters is turn the motor off. And then I'm going to show you the pieces that I've laid out here that we're going to send you. Uh, if you didn't buy it from me, um, you're going to have more accessories. Just use these. We've got an adapter for the ham wheel, the screw for the adapter, and then this bracket that we bent for you. Um, if you didn't get the motor from me, you may get a bracket like this, and you will have to bend it accordingly. I don't have a video on that, unfortunately. So if you've got it, try and bend it like this. This is for an, uh, I'm putting this on a Juki DDL 8700H right now. Um, if I was doing it on a different machine, we may have to bend that bracket dif differently. Uh, an example would be a DU1181N. Um, this part of the bracket here is going to be longer, uh, so I'm going to bend it differently. Okay, and I have the synchronizer here that I will be installing. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to get this in position and I'm going to show you where I'm going to go next with this. Okay, I've repositioned by the hand wheel here. I am going to install the adapter with this large screw. Uh, the motor, if you didn't get it from me or the synchronizer, will come with two of those screws. Make sure you use the one that goes in nice and smoothly. Do not try and force this into the shaft of the machine because this is delicate in here. You could ruin the threads if you use the wrong screw. This is, I'm using a slotted screwdriver. Hold the wheel, turn, and that's as tight as you want it. The other uh, tool you'll need, the only other tool you'll need, is an Allen wrench or a hex key. Get yourself a set. I don't know exactly what size this is. Um, unfortunately, the synchronizer does not come with it, so you will need one of these. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is put that bracket on, this one on. I have to go to the back of the machine and remove a couple screws, which I will show you momentarily. Okay, so this is the back of your Juki machine. Um, I'm going to be removing these two screws here. As you've seen, we've done this numerous times on this machine, so we've sort of dinged it up quite a bit. Okay. I'm going to grab the bracket now, and we have marked this one for you. And so I'm going to just put these in um, by hand right now. I'm not going to use the screwdriver to tighten them. I'm just going to hand tighten this ever so slightly. Not a lot because I want to make sure that these are lined up properly. Because sometimes if you tighten one completely and not the other one, it won't line up exactly. So I want to tighten these after I get them both in. We don't want to strip, strip these screws. Okay, now that I have that installed, then I'll come back around to the front of the machine. Okay, now I'm going to grab the synchronizer and taking a look at the synchronizer here, if you see this little slot here, oops, sort of went out of focus, the little slot here, um, it's going to go on this here. Okay, so I am going to slide it on the adapter. Okay, so this piece goes on the adapter and then this and this line up. All right, and so now I'm just going to want to tighten, but not overly tighten, one of these screws with my Allen wrench. Okay, so I got that nice and tight. Like I said, you don't have to over tighten it. I'm going to pause the video one second, grab that phone. Okay, I'm back. So now I've got uh, one screw tightened. I didn't tighten all of them because I'm going to want to program the synchronizer now. So making sure the power is off on your motor, I'm going to go around to the back of the machine or the back of the motor and plug this in. Okay. 
All right, so I'm on the back of the motor here. Motor is powered off. I've got this uh, part of the, the, uh, the plug of the synchronizer. I am going to plug it in. It can only go in one way. You'll hear it click. It's on. You can cover it up if you want with that part of it. You don't have to. That's up to you. Um, now it's plugged in, and now I will uh, program the synchronizer. Okay, so for this part of the video, I don't have my tripod, so it might be a little shaky. Uh, so I'm going to engage the servo motor. I'm going to initiate it or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to turn it on. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to hit the P button two times until I see N1. Okay, now N1, I want to hit the S button two or three times until I see 1. And then I'm going to hit the P button to lock that in place. You'll see N2. We'll go over N2 in a minute. All right, so now the synchronizer is engaged, okay? So if I come up to the needle here and I push my pedal, so on the motor I'm going to push the pedal. I have it stopping in the up position all the time. Now there's a couple of different ways we can get that in the needle down position. So if you want needle up, the way I have mine, we're good to go. It's not going to always be perfect like that. You may have to make some adjustments to the synchronizer, okay? So right now, for me, I'm going to show you this part. Hit the P button until you see N2. So it's three times. One, two, three. And now we hit the S button. Zero right now is needle up. One should be partially needle down, but we may have to make some adjustments. So we're hitting that P button again to lock it in place, and now you'll see N3. Okay, coming back up. All right, excuse the screwdrivers in the back. Now we're not quite needled down, so this is where we're going to have to make an adjustment, okay? So I want needled down now, I'm going to show you how to do needle down, okay? I'm going to pause the video for a minute and then reposition again. Alright, so the reason I tightened only run, one screw originally on the synchronizer is to make this a little easier to put it in needle down or needle up. Right now my motor is um, set to like in between needle up and needle down, so I want to make this adjustment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to loosen the screw that I tightened. Okay, I do not want to move the synchronizer. So when I loosen this, make sure the synchronizer stays in the same exact spot. So this part of the synchronizer I do not want to move. Okay, I'm going to loosen this screw. Screw is loose. If it moves ever so slightly, that's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the ham wheel until my needle, okay, so my needle over here, I'm going to turn my hand wheel until the needle goes down in the position I want it. But I don't want to turn, I'm sorry, I don't want to turn this, I want to turn this. Okay, so I'm going to, actually, do me a favor, turn the motor off. I don't want you to get your hands caught on this. Okay, so... Hold this piece in place. Don't let it turn, okay? And then turn your ham wheel until you get needle down. So I'm turning mine quite a bit. Yeah, I'm moving this a little bit. A little bit's not going to matter. Okay, and now I've got my needle down, and I'm going to show you that. I turned the ham wheel. I did not turn this piece, okay? Screws are loose, okay? Now my needle's in the down position. Sort of hard to tell from there. Zoom in on there. You can take a look my needles down now okay and I'm going to come back to here now this being in the same position all I did was turn the ham wheel on the machine okay I'm tightening just the one same thing I'm not gonna tighten everything yet I'm just tightening the one screw this one screw okay yours could be down here hopefully it's in a better position um, you may have to loosen one and get to the one that's in the right position. So mine is here. Yours could be down here. Um, hopefully it'll be close to the top position. All right, so now I have it set. All I have to do now is check it. So I'm going to bring this back over here. Let me pause this and I'll get in a better position. All right, move these screwdrivers out of the way. Allen wrench. So now when I engage the motor, every single time, it should go needle down. So I'm going to turn it on. All right, so we have needle down. 
All right, so now if you want to do needle up, we're going to go back to the motor again. We're going to hit the P button three times until we see N2, and then we're going to go back to zero, hit the P button again and lock it in place, and now we should have somewhat of a needle up. Got it? Okay, so now I have it in the correct positions. All right, so I'm going to put mine back, hit the P button three times to see N2, P button, or I'm sorry, S button until I see the number one, P button to lock it in place, and now I'm back to needle down. So now that I'm done with this, I am going to tighten all three screws on the synchronizer. Let me go over to do that. Okay, now I could turn this because I've already, I've got this one screwed, screwed in, right? And now I have programmed the motor, so everything's all good. So now I could tighten all three screws. I've had a couple customers tell me that one of these screws was missing or stripped. As long as you have at least two of these on here, you're good to go. It'll be fine. All right, so that is installing and programming the synchronizer for the Reliable 6000 SM. This is on a DDL 8700H, but like I said, you could do this on any machine um, that has a bobbin winder built into it. Okay, if it has a different type of bobbin winder, like if you don't have this bobbin winder, it's gonna be a different video. You could technically do it with this video, but there's a little easier way if you don't have a bobbin winder. I'm Steve from SewingGold.com. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Um, hope you have a great day. Thank you.